An orphan disease is a disease for which there is no good therapy. Most orphan diseases happen to also be rare diseases. The relationship there is that there hasn't been as much effort to identify cures. There's about 7,000 orphan diseases and maybe about $16 million allocated through the National Institute of Health for orphan diseases. Until we have a solution for any disease, we actually have to say they're all without a home. NMO stands for neuromyelitis optica. An autoimmune process of the central nervous system that affects the optic nerves and the spinal cord. The symptoms of optic neuritis are blindness. The symptoms of spinal cord involvement are paralysis. He told me on the phone that I could probably, you know, I might have four years with my daughter before either she wasn't with me or she could be blind or paralyzed. I've always felt like we, it was just us who had this, always us. Our doctor had made a joke and said, we're gonna say you have your own disease. People think, oh, you're faking this. You're not really that tired. Or, you know, why do you feel good one day and not another when you know inside your body there's some serious stuff going on. Right now, NMO is thought to be a very rare disease. It's about one in 100,000. Neuromyelitis optica was considered under the umbrella term of MS. We used to call it uh, Devic syndrome, and it was a constellation of neurologic abnormalities. We know now that one of the primary causes relate to antibodies that are directed against a certain structure. The neuromyelitis optica antibody we discovered by chance in the clinical laboratory. The three of us didn't really quite realize exactly what the other one was doing. We kind of shared our data and then Vanda recognized this unique pattern around the vessels. We were looking for a new water transporting protein and it turns out quite accidentally that this protein is the target for NMO IgG. There's no accidents. It's hopefully the insight to see what the accidents are, and this is how it can actually link up with another one. The NMO story is a great example of being able to take a group of patients that may have been misclassified as multiple sclerosis and giving them their own name, their own face, their own biology, and ultimately their own treatment. The work that I have seen Victoria do over the past few years has been extraordinary. And it does take a leader to stand up and not just talk about awareness, but to follow through when you're a mom on a mission and it's your child and you feel there's some kind of a clock going, people are gonna talk. Find the best, talk to them, but insist they talk to each other. That's exactly the kind of meeting like the Guthy Jackson Symposium. Bringing these doctors together so that they can converse and share ideas. You get to hear what other people's work is and then you can see how it fits with your own. To see the work that's gone before, maybe build on that, not start from scratch. We understood that there was a dramatic drive to create collaborations and so at the moment I'm collaborating with about 20 different national and international groups. These include structural biologists, immunologists, neurologists, epidemiologists, People from Johns Hopkins, people from the Mayo Clinic, people from the University of Texas Southwestern. Other labs, for example, at Stanford are working on B-cell responses, and we're working on T-cell responses. We've developed a collaboration with Alan Berkman, who's just several floors up. And before the NMO Foundation identified us and brought us together, we didn't know about each other's existence. I've never seen this kind of organization and cooperation among leaders in the field. We all recognize it's going to be a group effort. I think the technology that is going to have the greatest impact on our learning about orphan conditions, and for that matter, all conditions in healthcare, is the technology that connects people globally through networks. We're living in a computer age, and, and despite that, this has never taken place yet. This is a blueprint for a cure of potentially all autoimmune diseases. It'll have an impact on how to approach treating those diseases. It'll have an impact in terms of methodology. The idea is putting together all these orphans, collaborating between them so that we can answer questions that apply to as many people as possible. Now we're talking about things maybe that we never thought would have anything to do with one another, but in fact they do, and we only know that because we shared information. I would carry that analogy beyond having a flashlight or two flashlights, beyond turning the light on in the room to the sun coming up. I know that when you put your mind to it, there is nothing that you can't do, and I'm, I'm not gonna stop until I find a cure for this and a model that really works for people and for the world of medicine to change it. 